Okay, so I'm going to show you guys the new Google Meet features that will be rolling out to our district in a, hopefully a couple days or a couple weeks. Um, okay, so as normal, you would start logging in to your Google Meet through your Google Classroom as a teacher. So I'm going to click on the Meet link that's generated by Google Classroom. And you could see on this landing page that basically everything is still the same. You still have the option to turn your camera off and your mute and mute yourself. Um, but also take a look at this little button that was just added. That means to turn on background. That means to turn on your background blur. So that's for a teacher if they want to hide the background um, of their environment to their students. They could just turn that on and it completely blurs the background. I could tell you from first experience when I use this, it is a little bit weird if you turn on your background blur. All you see is the teacher's face right here and then everything in the background is blurred out. Looks a little weird. So I would just, uh, you know, please mention the teachers to sit in a suitable place so this way that they don't have to turn on this uh, weird feature of turning on their background. So I'm just going to keep it off, so I'm not going to click it. And everything else is the same here. Just click on Join Now. All right, you still get a window that pops up with all the uh, meeting nickname um, and how to join and if you want to add people individually. I'm going to click on X. Take a look at the bottom left. You see now a little host controls icon that's in a blue shield and a lock button. I'm going to click on this icon here. And now you can see these are your meeting safety controls. Take a look at the first one, the quick access meeting control. When turned off, which obviously it's on right now, the host must join first and everyone who isn't invited must ask to join, including people in your organization. Now, we as teachers in the North Bergen School District, we don't need to turn this off because students can't enter our Google Meet um, without the teacher being present anyway. If you are uh, hosting a Google Meet, maybe like if you're running an ed camp or you're just using a Google Meet just for people, you know, maybe teachers outside of the district or maybe just friends, um, you could turn it off this feature so every person that enters your Google Meet, they have to be admitted manually by you. Now, um, this is very, very good if you're meeting with a lot of teachers from different districts and you want to have a meet, maybe like for a Hudson County PLCs, this is a great option. If you untoggle this, which means if you turn it off, every participant has to be admitted manually. But for teachers and students in the district, we could just leave this on. This other option here, share their screen. Uh, do you want students to be able to share their screen? Um, it depends on your class. If you know they're going to share inappropriate material, turn it off. And also the option for sending ch chat messages. Do you want them to chat with you? They can remember they could send messages to you and to everybody else in the class. If you have a class that will send inappropriate messages, turn it off. Okay, and then just click anywhere else and that will save automatically as you could see here. If you click on view all host meet settings, you'll uh, have the same type of screen here for quick access, sharing screens and chat messages, and then the audio, video. Okay, you still have your mute button, your leave call button, and your turn camera on and off button. You still have your captions. I uh, just want to let you know the captions are, aren't always 100% effective. Um, there's a lot of things that when you say it, it misconstrues what you're saying and um, just writes really weird words sometimes. So, you know, if you have a student who is hard of hearing, definitely use it, but it's not going to be 100% accurate. You still have your present now screen. You could show your entire screen, window, or Chrome tab. Uh, also tell teachers, they might ask you, well, when I show a YouTube video, the sound is choppy or the sound doesn't play at all. Tell them when they're sharing a YouTube video to make sure they share the Chrome tab that the video is on. This way they'll have a nice, clean uh, experience. So tell them to share the Chrome tab that the YouTube video is playing. So this way the sound is nice and crisp and they don't get any uh, weird feed feedback with the music and uh, sound coming from their video. Okay, if I click on the three options here, the three buttons options, you have now an option to open up a Jamboard. So I'm going to click on open a jam and you can either start a new one or choose from Drive. I'm going to click a new one. It says here a link to the jam will be sent to others in the meeting. I'm going to click start new jam board. And
and here's your jam. I'm just going to, you know, just draw on it for a second. And if you click off of it, you're going to see here in the chat box that it actually shared out the link with everybody else. Now on a student side, let's take a look. So now I'm on a student side and I'm going to see if I could click on this Jamboard, what happens. Okay, it says that I need access. So let's take a look back on the teacher side. If I click on my Jamboard again, you could see up here that it says share, that is private to only me. Now if you want to turn this on for students, just click on the change the link and then choose your school district. And then they will be able to either view or you can make them edit. Okay, so make sure that when you go into your options on your um, first Jamboard to change the settings so the students can view it. So now that I choose done, and I go back to student mode. So now I am in student mode and I and you could see now that I only have viewing um, permission. I cannot draw on it. Okay, so you as a teacher, you can still continue to draw on your, your board. You could, um, you know, erase, you could insert sticky notes, images, circles, and text boxes. You could see here that I have one person viewing it and that's a student in my class. Okay, so obviously, um, if I was uh, on a jam board, I would probably share my screen so I, I could, you know, share the jam board that I'm working on. So if I click on share a window and I want to share the jam board, this is where it is right here. And I would just share this window. Um, depends on what you want to do. If you want to present the jam board to the entire screen or just keep going on and off and drawing on it. So that is your jam board options. If I click on the three dots again, I also have change layout mode. Okay, so you have auto, which is, that's default, that's what will be set on. You have tiled, spotlight, and sidebar. These are the same options that we had before, but now you can see in tiled that by default, tiled is set to, I think it's either 12 or 20. Now if you want to see 49 students on your one screen, just toggle this all the way and then you have 49 is your set limit. So obviously if, if you have a really big class, 35 students, this is a really great option. You'll see all 35 of their tiles, their faces on your one screen. Click X and now you can see, you see how they're all popping up here? The more students you get, the tiles will become smaller. Okay, now let's take a look at our other options. Again, we have full screen, turn on black background blur, and these are the other options that were still here. Okay, so let's take a look back. So we went over our whiteboard, record meeting. Uh, record meeting is still there, remember that. Now we have this other option called breakout rooms, which is really cool because I know a lot of teachers have been asking about it. There is an extension uh, in Google called breakout rooms, but it is so complicated to use. Um, even someone like me, I can't, I could can figure it out, but it's just, it's just, it's too much work on the teacher's side, to be honest with you. So um, hopefully we'll get this breakout rooms uh, pushed out to us in a couple days. Um, so let's click on it. And now you can have as many breakout rooms that you want just by toggling up and down. I'm going to set, I want two breakout rooms, okay? Now, it says here you could either type the guest names or drag it here. Okay, so once you drag in all your students to their appropriate breakout rooms, you're going to click on Save. And here are the breakout rooms. Now, when you want to join the breakout room to see what the students are doing, just click on join, choose join. And now you could see exactly who is in each breakout room and what they're doing. Now you as a teacher, um, you actually uh, could see the breakout rooms and click join. The students won't be able to see this part because I'm on a teacher account. But um, now that you're in that breakout room, you're in breakout room one, uh, you could, you know, unmute yourself and start speaking. 
When you want to leave this breakout room, just choose leave. And it says return to main room. Choose return. Now you are back in the main room. Uh, so as a teacher, you see how we still see our breakout rooms and we could join anyone that we want. When you are finished and you want the students uh, to be back in the main room, uh, say that you give them like 10 minutes to break out. Just choose uh, end breakouts. Everyone will return to the main room. Choose end breakouts. And now you're back on your screen and you can just click on X. Okay, so once we are out of breakout sessions, let's take a look at other options. We have this little um, meeting tools button. Let's click on it. And you have uh, two options now. You could get a quick pulse of the audience by asking a poll. I'm going to choose polls and start a poll. And we can just ask a simple question. Happy, sad. You can even add other options or just delete it. Click Save and now when you want to launch your poll just click on Launch and then that poll will be live for all students. You could also show if you want everyone to see the, each other's results if you want to show it or just as a quick um, maybe a little assessment tool for yourself. Okay when you're done just click on End a Poll and go back. You could also have the option to ask questions, allow participants to ask questions. Allow questions, and then whatever questions they ask will be all here for you to see. And this is the option that the students will have on their side to ask a question. So if you do turn off the chat feature, which I think is a good, good feature, especially if you know the kids are going to say inappropriate things and write inappropriate things, turn it off. But um, you know, some teachers might say, well, I don't want to turn off the chat because what if they want to ask you something? This is the option that you have here, is your Q&A, okay? So the students will have this little button here, ask a question, and um, I think this is great. So that hopefully these options will be sent out to us in a couple days, uh, hopefully not weeks. And um, now you guys know as tech teachers on how to train your, your teachers when these features start rolling out. So this way uh, you're not blindsided by it and you'll have uh, answers to their questions.